This episode of Boss Rush After Dark is brought to you by, well, you. If you want to learn how to support our family of podcasts, head over to patreon.com slash boss rush media or search for us on the Patreon app on your smart device. Thanks for helping us build something better. Hello, hello, what is poppin' everyone? Welcome back to Boss Rush After Dark, the premium podcast show for the network, the alternative podcast show for the Boss Rush Network. I am your host, Laurent Dawkins, and back with me, as always, is the one, the only, that pharmacist herself, Stephanie Klimov. What's up, girl? Good evening, friends. Good evening. And also, not riding shotgun, but, but riding with us, no doubt. <laughs> It's the man, the myth, the legend, the boss rush, boss man himself, Corey Geerich. Dude, hello. Up? I I like being behind you too. Hmm. Wait, I don't know how that sounds. Hmm. I know exactly hmm. how that sounds. It's after a dark baby. <laughs> Just kidding. Hi, I'm here. <laughs> hey. And uh, it always it's always a pleasure whenever this guy is here with us at the uh, at the network, especially on Boss Rush After Dark, because like this guy, this this guy, he, he knows how it goes around here. Welcome back to the show, Mr. Matthew Keel. Can I kick it? Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> she lies. She tells so many lies. It- <laughs> I mean, it's a it's a it's it's a tribe called Quest, and it's peanuts. Oh, yeah. It works on so many yeah. levels. I love it so much. Definitely. You know, though, Lucy Lucy Van Pelt is also the same person. I, you know, like you know, like if a husband was like, "Was I good?" She's like, "Yes, baby, you were good." She's she's one of those. She's one of those. <laughs> yeah, you were good. It's okay. Go to sleep. I'll take care of it. <laughs> What's that buzzing? Don't worry about it. Oh, my phone. It's just all the alerts, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, good evening, everybody. I'm in How's some discords that be wilding, y'all. Just saying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Gives a new meaning to shameless plug, am I right? I, it, 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 Is that damn, plug that Damn right. Plug? No shame in this plug. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, oh boy! I'm 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 glad we're back here. You know, it's, it's Wednesday. It's always our favorite night of the week, and everything. You know, I'm I'm glad we're here. You know, um, Stephanie, you feeling better? Mm, yeah, maybe. That um, that sounds like a no. Well, like the symptoms are different. Like obviously, I'm better enough to actually be here because I know I missed After Dark last time. I just I, I I couldn't, and I felt well enough to stay up late, but. I'm still coughing up a lung every time I go to sleep and every time I wake up. I am coughing for like 20 minutes straight and my lungs feel like they've been dipped in lava. Mm. Oh, that is not a good description. Yeah, lava I, lung. Yeah, it's like I'm, you inhaled Listerine and just sort of hanging oh, out in your yeah. diaphragm. Yeah. I mean, I I'm not, haven't been as sick as long as Corey's been sick, but I'm going on two weeks. I'm like, I'm ready for this to be done, please. Well, the, well, the major difference between you and Corey is like you kind of got after it, like when you figured out like you were sick. Whereas Corey was just like, "No, it's it's just a flesh wound." Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, a flesh wound. Your arms here's off. A, here's the thing: I've been sick since my wife did the math for me because I'm dumb. Like two- <laughs> 1978. <laughs> 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 no, two, so, two, two weeks before two weeks before Christmas, and that's my, a long fucking time. My cough is just going away, and it's February first of this, as of this recording. So, so basically, now, what you're saying is the doctor gave you the good shit. Yeah, I was on. So I was on. I had an inhaler. I had a steroid. Corey's had, like, I'm gonna stay sick so I can keep on this good shit. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, an anti-inflammatory, an antibiotic, and something else. Are but we just let talking general cold, or are we talking COVID? No, he I had, had like bronchitis. bronchitis. I had okay. a light case of bronchitis. Uh, okay, yeah, that's light? Light? Yeah. light. That's what oh, they no, told bron- me. Bron- bronchitis can fuck you up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, I didn't sleep for like a week and a half, and I did all this organizational stuff for Boss Rush. It was really a productive t- two weeks for me on this medication. 
<laughs> bronchitis productively painful <laughs> yeah so uh but i feel better now sort of good yeah so now stephanie are you is it same situation for you or, or are you what, what are so i haven't developed bronchitis I haven't developed bronchitis yet. I thought I had strep throat, but I tested COVID negative, strep negative, flu negative. So the lady's like, you just have a really nasty ass cold. I'm like, cool. Awesome. Thanks. Seven-year-old child yeah. Petri dish. Do you feel what? like it's a false negative for the flu? I don't think so because I didn't have any fever like that. I, okay. I was completely right. fever free. I, I don't think so. Because she had all the cowbells she needed. <laughs> don't both underestimate the power her, her. of huh i was gonna say both both you and your cat are sick right now <laughs> yeah but she's on some good stuff i'll tell you that she's still wigging out <laughs> she's she's <laughs> the narc can't handle her drugs no <laughs> she cannot oh oh man oh man uh well uh you know you know in in the traditional fashion of uh, of after dark, you know, of course, we've got we've got some topics and, and things to get into, and just and just as a disclaimer, this is the show that we don't always talk about things that are content appropriate for our other for our other anchor shows here on the network. So let's just get right on into it, like sexual intercourse. Okay. What? Mm, mm. Just remember, consent is key. We are not. We all, we're not we talking all, we, about that tonight, we, unless somebody uh, had a job where they had to do that, right? Because worst jobs ever. I mean. You don't know my life. <laughs> yeah. when, I right, first, uh, when I first moved to Philly, it was hard out here. I'm just saying. Look, I'm like Planet Fitness. I'm a judgment free zone. Dude, okay? dude, 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 you, yo, it's hard right now. Shit, like, like I'm telling you, hashtag OnlyFans is like is like a, a skip and a jump away from from for certain people around here. <laughs> you know, I I need I need to, to pay that vet bill. I was gonna say, I, yeah. I'm trying, to, I'm, trying, I'm trying to buy a house this year. I, I mean, me too. I'm one, I'm one or two pedicures away from putting my feet up online. Just saying. <clears throat> I'm not. I've just, I heard actually, there's a market. Before we get into topics, y'all ever had a pedicure? Yes. Yes. No. You should have a pedicure. <laughs> it's an experience. It's, I am. I'm going to tell you. You know, I had enough people tell me that like you really should, and then I'm like. My wife and I are going to get ped- pedicures. We did. I've never been so relaxed. It was so nice. Right? Unless, unless you're ticklish. I'm very ticklish. I'm ticklish, I mean, but you know. I, I just, I just said be a little firmer and they were fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> be a little firmer. Woo. <laughs> There's so many There's That's so how many kids are made. <laughs> <laughs> you're not noodling Speaking it. Which, Speaking of which, uh, almost a father still. <laughs> yeah, con- congrats. Yes. You can call Matt daddy. Oh. Well. Oh. Well, so. Do, no, please do don't you two me. need please, a room? Please, well, we've had a room. Yeah. <laughs> we've, Corey, we've, Corey. we've shared the meat before. Am yes. I right, Matt? Yes. <laughs> and let me tell you, we put whiz and onions on that thing. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Stephanie, we're we're gonna we're gonna record our own show after episode fifty five. You know, we're, no, we're, we're, we, Corey and I are a progressive couple. Y'all are welcome. It's fine. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah. Are either of you lactose intolerant? No. No. Good. That means we don't have to change. No, it. with the amount of with the amount of cheese I eat, no, I am not. <laughs> if I were lactose intolerant, I'd still fucking eat cheese. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cheese is so good. <laughs> yeah, don't trust anyone that doesn't like cheese. Yeah, you trust them right out the door and never see them again. <laughs> if you want to be a Patreon producer, head on over to Patreon, patreon.com slash Media, and find out which tier is right for you. Our Patreon producers at the $5 tier or higher for this month are Adriel Munger, Austin Campbell, Celeste Roberts, Christian S., Sana Dierig, Francisco Santillan, and Rebecca Jewell. Thank you for your continued support. Um, Alright, so who's got a topic for us tonight? There are two, apparently. Technically, there's three. Because Celeste gave us one that we never answered, like, a month ago. 
Well, let's do hers right now. Then. Yeah, right. yeah. What does what does Celeste have to say? Because uh, night yeah. lights and funny incidents in the dark. Discuss. Night lights just... and funny. Incidents. It feels so... it feels like our intro just kind of like set us up. So, for this... yeah. uh, I can't say anything because there are police reports pending, so I, I can't really <laughs> talk about open investigations. Oh God. I told you, I, I told you, dude. You do not need to run out, run the trash out with nothing on. You don't do that. You don't run the trash out naked. You don't do that. But it was so hot out that night. <laughs> I was sweaty. <laughs> Gotta air those boys out. Isn't that, yo, isn't that the worst? That is the worst when like, well, like it's so freaking hot that you know, like sweaty balls. You know, like yeah, no, it's it's, it's like well, well, it's not even that. It's it, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's a, like, see, there's this a, is the one. This. I, I learned. Thing, like, I learned as a teenager that I need to shave down there because it starts to stick <laughs> real quick. Oh, like, it's bad. It's this is the bad. one thing I'm talking early funkadelic funk down there. It's bad. Uh, I, I so know, it that looks great. So when it comes to like the hot summer days, I feel like it's the one time that I envy women that there's just nothing down, you know, down there, you know, the, uh, to, like uh, supplement the heat. Okay. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying it figuratively, not literally. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <sighs> I can't laugh too much. I'm gonna but, choke. Let's just put it this way. Let's just put it this way. I'm not. Like, I can't. I can't do that. I can't. No. I have to, let's put it this way. <laughs> women can forcefully sit. Women can forcefully sit down in a chair and not, not worry if they hurt themselves. Yeah. Hmm. Not Don't if there are Legos there. on that seat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and everybody gets hurt. Mm. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Nightlights. So. Okay, yeah. One more time with the question because I forgot the question. Uh, <laughs> it just, yeah, it's just nightlights and fun, funny incidents in the dark. Discuss. That's it? Like, okay. Yeah. So. Um... I mean, I like to have a nightlight on because, like, if I wake up in the middle of the night and I have to pee and sometimes I wake up and I don't know where I'm at because. I'm an idiot and you know because sometimes sometimes I fall asleep on the couch sometimes I fall asleep in this chair that's right over here sometimes I go to bed like sometimes I forget where I fall asleep and like you know I gotta have a light on to see where I'm at when my eyes open you know I envy you I need absolute darkness like my soul just complete darkness blackout dark if there's like a light on in another room I will not be able to sleep oh yeah well the one I'm also one of those Oh, good, good. Oh, I was gonna say the one time, the one time it was dark, and I so I fell asleep on the couch, and uh, the, my our living room is located on this side of the office, and I walk through the office to go to the bathroom, which is behind me, and the cat sleeps in the office, and the one time that the light one like a small light wasn't on, I stepped on the cat, and I fell down, and the cat yelled at me. <laughs> And it was just a bad time. And I also had to pee really bad. So, you know. <laughs> the cat yelled at me. Because, you know, when you say the cat yelled at me, like, I've, 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 I've witnessed, like, when cats are, like, morally upset at you. Well, <laughs> so the, thing, was it... <laughs> the thing is, is the hallway, the hallway that leads from the living room to the kitchen, there's, like, there's no door in the office. So, like, my wife yells at me and says I'm too loud when I podcast at night when she's trying to sleep or the kids are trying to sleep. That's besides the point. There's a big open door right here. Like a like an opening. And then it steps down into the office because it's built and this house was built in like the 60s. So, like, there's like a the office. There's like one step down and the cat was leaning up against the like the step. And I stepped down and I stepped on the cat. I stepped on her <laughs> leg and her tail because. How dare you? I know. <laughs> and she was like. Bring and then she like <laughs> clawed at my feet. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm down for the count. Just leave me alone. I'm sorry. Go. And now she started sleeping under my wife's desk, which is preferable. Uh, as she should. <laughs> but there's always there's always the one night every couple weeks where she still sleeps like up against the the step over here and i have to like I, every time i walk through this door i look down now because cat wow <laughs> she she doesn't like to move huh no you know she, she's old similar... fat, dying for four years you know oh 
Yeah. Similar to Corey with like steps. Um, like I like when it's when it's dark, like I have a problem with I either I either miss the last step going down or, or I miss the last step going up. So you know, like sometimes you take you make that Hulk oh. step. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, like I do that, or you or you basically like basically you trip your own stuff down the stairs because you missed the last step and stuff like that. Yeah. Those are ones I have. Like it, it, I'm one of those people where if it's if it's if it's nighttime and it's dark, like the moment like any type of light hits my eyes, like it, it will wake my brain up and I can't fall back to sleep. So it's one of those situations where like if I need to go to the kitchen or to another room for something, I do it in absolute dark. Uh, uh, you know, so I've accidentally woken my boyfriend up a few times, you know, when we're sleeping over at either one, each other's places and stuff like that, because like I'm trying my best to like go do whatever I have to do, including the bathroom in the dark. Uh, one thing I have started to do though is, um, is I get those LED night lights for the uh, for the bathroom for the just for the toilet though like the ones you can put in the toilet so like when you so like when you lift the lid or when it senses that you're coming in there's a there's a nice little glow you know because <laughs> uh because i don't know i'm stubborn and i don't i don't want to sit down to pee at night are you sure are you sure you have to blink real fast you can strobe in there just have are a party you, are you sure you're just not proud of your poops and you just want to look at it before it goes away oh what oh. okay I, well, you know, just to be fair though, like I've gotten to that age now where sometimes I had you have to like double check, like you know, just to make sure nothing is wrong with me, you know, before I flush. I'm gonna call you both out. Both of you had the both of you doth protest too much. Everybody turns around and has a peek. Don't lie. <laughs> I do. I, that's what I was asking. <laughs> Don't lie. No, Everybody we all do, Corey. No one's gonna admit it, but we all do. <laughs> I just admitted it. I'm just saying. Figure it out. <laughs> Corey's like, damn it, I'm proud of it. Like, you better listen to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, my, yeah. So, um, I, yeah, I, I don't, I don't need if 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 there's night lights in my place, they're in the hallways and not, you know, like in bedrooms and stuff like that because, like, that's the absolute best way to keep me awake at night. And I already have one of those brains that doesn't like to shut off. So, like, but if if I wake up and like I see like a sliver of light coming through the coming through the curtains of the blinds, I'm awake. Yeah, you know it's 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 bad, and I have blackout curtains. My, my boyfriend hates when he stays over here because like because like we will go to bed and he will literally will not know what time it is the next morning because it's still dark in the room. Yes, yeah, so your room's like a casino. You just don't know what time it is. Hey, it's great for gaming though. It's great for yeah, gaming. I'm sure. I'm kind of like that way with sound too. I, uh, I, I mean, it doesn't need to be like 100% silence, but I do like it to be quiet. Like some people really enjoy, and I can understand why. Uh, what do you call those, like sound machine things? And mm-hmm. I was with someone for about three years, and he is very much used to, you know, a white noise machine. So he would need it every time he slept over, and I would just use, you know, my son's. Um, sleep machine but like I can't like so I would sit and like I would hyper focus on the noise I don't know why I was just it's there so I have to listen to it <laughs> and eventually I pass out of exhaustion but I stay up a little later than I want did he need a, did he need a white noise machine just to fall asleep or to stay asleep I because those are okay yeah because um <clears throat> I I know because of my time in the military um, that, you know, like all the ambient noise and stuff, especially I was on, the, I was in the Navy, so I was on ships. So, you know, like fan noise and stuff like that, oh, mm-hmm. like it kind of, it kind of became a thing I got used to. And there's another cool thing about us, us military folks. We, we can find any, anywhere, any place, any, any way to go to sleep. <laughs> like, like you can immediately tell when someone's like ex military based on where they're falling asleep at. <laughs> <laughs> uh but um but yeah like uh i i'm one of those people that you know like it's easier for me to fall asleep if there's something there's something for me to zone out on so i usually like fall asleep with the tv on i'll, I'll put the sleep timer on just to make sure like i because the tv will eventually wake me up in the middle of the night like <laughs> if the brain has gotten enough of a recharge and something's still on the television i will wake back up but you know um yeah so that's that's one of those things but uh yeah night lights not in the bedroom um <clears throat> Funny instance in the dark, um, you know, besides like tripping up or down the stairs, you know, in, in, in the dark, that's about it. You know, um, even though like one time, one time, like, uh, like I love my bed, but I swear like the, like, like the actual legs of the bed there, they, they protrude out just enough that bumbling around the dark can be a hazard. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah, I can't think of too many with me, but I know this sounds really cruel, but that's just being a parent, and no one just likes to admit it, but we all think it. As a parent, when my son transitioned from a crib to a bed, like with no no four walls or whatever, he would regularly (laughs) roll off the bed and hit the floor um, (laughs) while he's sleeping, and I think it's freaking hilarious. I probably shouldn't laugh because a poor kid fell off the bed in the thud. Whoops. Um, so, <laughs> ha ha. I don't know. <laughs> is it is it the fall out the bed crying or is it the fall out of bed and like and like like a zombie like puts himself back in the bed? <laughs> Thankfully, the latter. <laughs> yeah, those are uh, those are funny. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those those are funny. Like when when they fall out the bed and, and you like and and like you just wait a minute and you, to, just to hear what's going to happen next. They're like, oh, they, they either fell they either fell back to sleep on the floor or they got back in the bed. <laughs> mm-hmm. Corey, your kids doing any of that? Nah, my kids fall out of bed all the time. My daughter, especially. <laughs> and then she'll wake up and she'll cry. She'll wake everybody else up. And by the time we go in there to help her, she'll like there's a rocking chair in her room. She'll just crawl up in the in the rocking chair and pull a blanket on her and sleep in the chair. Aw. And everybody Aww. else is up and she's asleep. Rude. <laughs> God damn it. I, 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 that's I the last it. time I can actually say that. You realize this? <laughs> like, it's the last time. I can read both you and your wives' minds right now. Y'all like y'all like this little shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So. So. I night lights. I so I can fall asleep anywhere at any time. Like I could put my head down right now and just be asleep. <laughs> um, so nightlight, I don't, I don't. Nightlights won't keep me awake. Anything. However, sound. Uh, growing up in Des Moines, Iowa, uh, I developed a habit of not being able to sleep when it's quiet. Mm. I, I don't, I don't really understand why, but at some point when I was like ten. I started just listening to my Walkman when I went to bed. Um, didn't really matter genre, volume. Like it helped me. It helped me fall asleep. Uh, so I would, I would start doing that to the point where, like, I would wake up with my headphones on, and my mom would be like, "You are going to strangle yourself." And I'm like. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, lady, I've been doing this for months. Where, no, I don't think this, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think you're wrong for the concern, but I really don't think that's going to happen. I've been playing fast and loose with that my entire life. Uh, eventually, eventually that check's going to cash. I don't know. Um, but now, well, and so if I don't have something on, it's really difficult mm. to sleep. Like it was, when, I think that's probably one of the reasons why when I moved from Des Moines to Philly, I didn't have a whole lot of culture shock. I lived in the art museum area of Philly, which isn't, it's not like in the middle of the city, but it's not far. You always hear noise at night. Um, so I like, even in the winter, I would sleep with my windows open because I would always hear noise. Uh, and it would, I would sleep fine. Um, now if I ever go home and I just hear like crickets, that shit's unnerving. Like I, I, I'm like, and it's, I think I have a weird type of culture shock where it, I, it doesn't affect me till I go home. Mm. Like if I go to, if I go to Iowa and it's like, it's, it, it hits 9 PM there and like, nobody's out anymore. It's quiet. It's, it's empty. And all of a sudden I think there's going to be any manner of boogeyman jumping out of any manner of, of obstacle that I just can't see behind at night. Uh, same thing if I try, if, like whenever we go, like whenever Reba and I go back home, which we haven't had to, uh, in a couple years now, um, like we have to sleep with something on because it is just so unnervingly quiet there. Uh, I will say a couple of funny stories at night. Um, this is one that I remember specifically, I was nine years old. Um, we had had a dog named Sheba and, um, 
I wake up at night to go to the bathroom, just routine, gonna just gonna empty the bladder. I, you know, I generally try to, you know, walk softly because I have a heavy step anyway. And I had one as a kid because my dad used to tell me about it all the time. Like, stop walking so hard. You just wake up everybody. <laughs> anyway, so I open the door. I get out. I'm like halfway down the hall. It's pitch, it's pitch black. No nightlights needed. I knew my way around my house until our dog decided I was an intruder. Oh, no. my gosh. Oh, it's barking. It's barking full volume. All of a sudden, I am thrown out of rhythm. I scream at the top of my lungs, turn and run, hit a wall. Oh, oh. oh. And, and I am completely stunned. I'm at the top of the stairs. Roll down the stairs. No. At the bottom of the stairs. At the bottom of the stairs, I'm looking up and I just see my dad go, what the hell is going on out here? Meanwhile, I'm at the the bottom of the stairs crying at this point. And he's like, what are you doing down there? I'm like, are you serious? Not, are you okay? And well, you know, he is... I think he was probably still mostly asleep at this point, but then, but then he turned on the light. The dog Sheba runs down the stairs, starts licking my face. He's like, what the hell happened? I'm like, I fell down the stairs. How? Well, I got out to go to the bathroom. Sheba starts barking. I run because I'm scared off my, I'm scared out of my head, hit the wall because I forgot where I was and rolled down the stairs. Nobody was hurt. I still laugh about this. Probably still have some brain cell <laughs> issues, but you know we don't even talk about that. Um, but uh, the the one the one complaint uh, I have about uh, my wife's pregnancy, the one this is and this is this is a minor gripe at best. Uh, she's been it's been hard for her to sleep at night, which valid, um, but. Because it's hard for her to sleep, she I can't just put anything on. It has to be something that she's familiar with, that she knows, and nothing interesting is going to happen. So basically, as long as she knows what's going to happen, she can fall asleep. So mm-hmm. unfortunately, for the past five, six months, I've had to fall asleep to one of the following. I've had to fall asleep to Friends. Uh, I've had to fall oh. asleep to Big Bang Theory. Uh, or I've had oh, to no. fall asleep to Grey's Anatomy. Oh, wow. I I love Reba so incredibly dearly. However, if I never have, it's, it's pretty bad when I'm saying, please just play the Big Bang Theory because it is the best of that bunch. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll, I'll, whatever, I don't care Woo! what people want to say about friends. Those motherfuckers aren't friends. Those, those motherfuckers hate each other. Every single one. And two of them get fucking married. They're, they're they're weirdos and friends. That's, I saw, that's all I'm going to say. Saw, I saw a TikTok that said, you know, I don't like friends. I like living single, which is what friends is a ripoff of. Blew yeah. my fucking mind because it's correct. I never I never made that connection. Living single fucking rules uh, because yeah, they're actually friends. Um, but and Grey's Anatomy is like there's no hospital. I'm you know I can't say that, but like it that feels the most unrealistic of an emergency yeah. room of a surgery setting of, of anything that I've ever worked in. And I've been in healthcare for 10 years in OR in ER, you know, I've been in all those situations. That's bullshit. Number one, number, <laughs> th- number two, uh, even in Grey's anatomy, the x-rays are wrong. So I'll, I'll tell you that right now. Wow. That's sad. <clears throat> yeah. It's pretty bad when they say like, Oh, look at this guy's chest. Yeah. You're holding up an x-ray of a femur. That's a leg. Like that's not a chest, dumb docker. Um, okay, I think you're. I think you're being dramatic there, but <laughs> no, 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 no. See, I, I don't really care for Grey's Anatomy. Like, uh, like, like. I, I and the crazy part is, I like medical dramas, but mm-hmm. I never care for Grey's Anatomy. Now, now, the medical drama that I am all about right now is is freaking uh, uh the Resident. Okay, I don't know anything about that. So. Yeah. I don't know. Whenever yeah. people started talking about a Mick Dreamy, I'm like, Ugh. all right, yeah. don't care, <laughs> don't care. Yeah. See, when it, when everyone was saying, when it, when everyone pointed him out, I'm like, oh, he's that dude from Can't Buy Me Love. He's a fucking asshole. And I'm the only one that remembers which, that. Wait, movie. Which one's which one's Mick Dreamy? I 
I don't know his name. Uh, uh, I want to say it's Patrick. Pa- Dempsey. Okay, okay, the, Patrick Dempsey. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, because McSteamy, because McSteamy was the other one. Yeah. There's a McSteamy. Yeah, McSteamy yeah. was the one that fucked everybody. McDreamy oh was the one. <laughs> McDreamy was the one that only fucked a couple of them, but ended up with Gray. Wow, that's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. Yeah, I will say this. I said this when I was with my ex-wife because she started liking Grey's Anatomy. The only character that is worth anything in that show, George O'Malley. He rules. And that's it. Um, And they killed him. So. Oh, <laughs> so <laughs> spoiler alert for like <laughs> 12 years ago. I don't know. Um <laughs> But yeah, don't not, I mean, I could have all of these lights on. It could be the middle of the day. I could go back to that couch and fall right asleep after drinking three Red Bulls. So uh, night lights don't affect me at all. <laughs> you know, I actually was reminded of a story. Uh, and it is actually a in the dark story. Literally just a story because it happened to be in the dark. I Well, it's not that interesting. It just exists. Aww. I went to Vegas um, with my friend. Um, oh, we're in Vegas now. Nice. In, in, uh, well, um, it was her, her birthday celebration. So it was like a girl's trip, her and I. And, you know, we were on a budget. We're just trying to do like a bunch of different things. We don't have an unlimited budget to gamble. Um, sure. And we found this unique experience. And we're like, sure, we'll give it a shot. And it's dining in the dark. Has anyone heard? heard of that at all so yes yes. you literally they lead you to a table it is pitch black and you're supposed to eat and stuff and at first we thought like oh it's the coolest thing we're gonna use all of our senses except our sight i don't know why my my friend got like super paranoid because as soon as we sat down and it is pitch black she goes what's that noise Who's that over there? Oh my gosh, what if the waiter comes in and slits our throat? I'm like, dude, seriously? Did you have to say that? And she freaked out and like gra- grabbed my hand and like was squeezing the life out of me every time she heard like the smallest of noises. So this whole time I thought I was going to get murdered. Well, but see, now that's, you did exactly. I don't know which one of you said, I don't remember which one of you said you were going to use all your senses but sight, but that's what you're doing. Yeah, you literally did that, and yeah. unfortunately, when you close your eyes, you hear better. Uh, that probably yeah. sounds like a myth, but like I know when I close my eyes, all of a sudden I'm paying attention to whatever I yeah. hear. Yeah, but just the whole time she was just for some reason now all of a sudden thinking that something's going to come <laughs> around and like rip our f- heads off. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay. Oh boy, the dark is mm. scary. Mm. I th- I did we talk about that at all last week on our Facing Our Fears episode? Oh, is that what you guys talked about? Like phobias or fears? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I know, yeah, I think Jesse mentioned that, actually. The, the dark. All right, let me rattle that real quick. I'm afraid of heights. Death. Me too. Hmm. Death. <laughs> well, like everyone's afraid of death. Okay, so it's still a fear. Clowns. Hmm. Yes, clowns. Clowns. Definitely. I hate clowns. Just terrifying clowns. Yeah. So huh. I don't understand the fear of clowns. <laughs> Listen, buddy. No, I'm not. No, 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 no. no I am not. I am not trying to shame anybody. I'm not trying to say you know sack up. It's just a clown. Uh, because I can. I mean, aesthetically, you could clowns see put like you in sex. Oh. Well, in the oh, attack now, from now we're talking. <laughs> Killer Clowns from Outer Space, my parents were watching it, and I was a little child, kind of like what they did to me with Chucky. They were watching it when I was a child, and then I was terrified of dolls after that. Same thing with clowns. They were watching Killer Clowns from Space, and it's like burned into my brain. Like The clowns would like wrap up the people in cotton candy and stick a squiggly <laughs> straw in them and drink their blood. I'm like, oh my gosh, is a clown going to kill me? And guess what? Around that same time my grandparents took me to a circus and i got called up to the center of an arena with a clown <laughs> i was ter- traumatized y'all never <laughs> talk shit y'all can never talk shit to me again about my my irrational fear of the of the xenomorphs from the alien movies <laughs> never again <laughs> just say it man the dark is scary nobody right. can hear you scream in space <laughs> or the dark or if you're alone <laughs> 
I don't know. A bunch of people heard me scream in the dark as a nightmare. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I, guarantee, I guarantee in the dark, Stephanie can hear that clown horn, though. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> man. I can tell you. The dark. I'm sorry, Stephanie. That's the only one I'm going to, that's the only shot I'm going to take at you tonight. That's okay. <laughs> That's so fair. I don't know if this I'm going to say I don't know if the xenomorph is really irrational. It is. Aliens <laughs> are scary. Have you seen that thing? Have you seen alien? I haven't yeah. because those things are scary. Yeah, but you haven't seen movies. So <laughs> right. Thank you. I'm glad somebody said it tonight. Well, you know, I get tired of seeing it. Um, um, I I enjoy only the best of movies. Like Indiana Jones. And the last I was just about to say Indiana yeah. Jones. <laughs> Which, speaking of, I'm giving a marathon those four movies. Yeah. Oh, wow. All right. Great movies. Give a marathon. No, I love the Indiana, Indiana Jones. Like they, Crystal, they I, were... I will say this, and I think that I think that Corey Stoy and I did the 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 correct job when we ranked those movies. Mm-hmm. Standard definition. Uh, what y'all, y'all rank Crystal Skull? Was it? It was. It was last. I think. I think it was last. Yeah. It was last, but it, we had a debate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But. It was last. I don't think Crystal Skull I mean, was a bad movie. I don't think it was a bad movie. It just did not stand up to the previous three. I see. I th- personally, I think Temple of Doom is worse than Crystal. Skull. So do I. I think I also really. I love. Stoy, Stoy fought super hard. He's like, yeah. I'm not doing. He's like, I. I let y'all have Last Crusade. True. <laughs> yeah. He did let us put Last Crusade first. Yeah, because it's correct. But yes. Ah, oh, man, Indiana Jones. Great. Great franchise. I really hope this new one is not bad. Mm-hmm. Me too. Same. It doesn't have to be amazing, but I just hope it's not bad. Have you all seen trailers for the new Back to the Future? No. What? 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 They're making a new Back to the Future? Yeah. And is I'm it a gonna... reboot? No. Wait, what? It's I a re- they weren't it's everybody, every, it's, on the face of it, everybody's back. It's directed by Steven Spielberg, mm. not by Robert Zemeckis. Wait, hold mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. I feel like you're you're lying to me here. And I think the way I, because I've only seen it on TikTok, uh, but I think it's everybody's trying to find Marty, including his son, who is played by one of the modern Justin Garfield, this this one of the modern Spider Man. Hmm. Oh, hold on. And are you sure? <laughs> I'm okay with this. I I'm I will I will wait and see. Hmm. I can't even believe that they're trying to do that. But then again, you know, we got Ghostbusters Afterlife, which I have yet to see, but I've Amazing heard, I've heard movie. other things about it. Oh, is it? Okay. <sighs> I I wanted to see the movie. I, I want to see the movie and um and it was right it was right after my boyfriend and I got serious started seriously dating and stuff like that. I wanted to see the movie. Oh, you're getting busy. He, and he wasn't interested in seeing the movie, so like, it, 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 so like, you know, like that that war has started, you know, where it's like, where it's like, oh, I don't watch movies anymore because of my significant other. <laughs> that war has started. <laughs> now I'm 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 being over dramatic about that. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of lucky. A... I'm kind I'm kind of lucky. Like Reba realizes that our tastes are just vastly different. Yeah, and and we can kind of go our own ways, which is cool. Yeah, Sana and I are the same way. I mean, we have things that we watch together, but or you know, do together. But then it's like, well, she prefers this, and I'm, you know, gonna go do my own thing. So, okay, so now I have a question. Uh oh. Mm-hmm. Um. So, and and you're, you'll appreciate this. Uh, this specifically, for, I mean, Laron, I I want you to chime in because I'd like to hear your thoughts. Okay. Uh, but this is probably going to be more of a wheelhouse for Corey and and Stephanie. What kinds of things prepare you to be a parent? Oh God, nothing. Um, nothing. <laughs> Everything you think, or your friends tell you, or your parents tell you, you're just going to throw it out the window the first day because your kid is going to act different than you did or your friend's kids did. Like even my two kids, right? They're totally different. You know, my when my daughter was like one and two, she had a real problem like biting and whatever. And my son is turning two, and tonight, and my my daughter never did this, by the way. And he he 
we say he goes into rage mode and hit, like he picked up a scooter and threw it across the room. He picked up a beanbag <laughs> chair and threw it across the room. He picked, up a, he picked up a little ch- chair and threw it across the room tonight, too. And he like every time he throws something, he like he like throws his arms down. He's like, Arr! like it's it's super funny until you know obviously when he throws big heavy things it's kind of scary but then he does that and it's hilarious but like Mm -hmm. my daughter never did that she colored on the walls she smeared yogurt on the carpet or on the tv or you know (laughs) she just they're two very different children who came from the same parents right? right and yeah, like he had to that, preface that. No, I, I'm just saying, like you know, and, and like my my cousins are all they're It's a family of five, and all of them could not be vastly different from the next kid, right? Like mm-hmm. it's just there's nothing that's going to prepare you for it. But all I can say is, is like you're going you're going to figure it out and do the best you can, and you're going to mess up. Sure, probably once or twice a day maybe <laughs> even only once but... or twice <laughs> <laughs> giving me some credit <laughs> yeah so I mean... go ahead go Stephanie. ahead Steph. sorry maybe you might be able to relate to this a little bit matt but like being in the medical field i'm i kind of think more like that so i did buy one of those like it's not really how to raise a child book but it's a thick book mm-hmm. of like about what every stage of a child goes through like what are the general milestones what are the typical things that you see or deal with with that and but that's just how my brain works being in in, you know in pharmacy and stuff like that so I found that helpful because that's how my brain works so I was able to use that as a guide I was still like flustering and bumbling like a fool every time but it was like you know my my binky like okay I have this thing but actually I, I, I do change my mind and I do have like one answer is as long as you have a good support system, whatever that may be, mm-hmm. that I think is what ultimately just kind of gets you through it. Support yeah. system. Well, like what you were saying about milestones, like those are, those are things that I all have, that I have questions about for sure. And, um, I have a mother-in-law who's an occupational therapist and a wife who's a psychotherapist and both of them. And I think, I know you and I were talking before recording started tonight at all. Uh, my wife knows a ton about early childhood development, you know, and being a parent. And not, I don't want to say being a parent. Cause I feel like that's, that's the wrong way to word that, but she knows a lot about young babies. Um, my mother-in-law's specialty is zero to three. So in terms of like the child meeting milestones, like I will know to the day if that child has met a milestone. What I won't know is what I need to do to get them there. Um, and I think, and, and like, and I know this topic is, is a, is a, is a nice fun little discussion. And I didn't, ex- I didn't expect anything to be like oh here's the cheat code to being a parent because there's there's absolutely no such thing um but um there's another thing like my son i love him he is an amazing child but he's slow um and that caused me a lot of stress in the beginning because i'm like oh milestones how come like other kids that are his age or younger are doing this and not this um and i realized that that really gave me a lot of unnecessary stress. I felt mm-hmm. like they still can be gray areas. If you give it time, you know, and eventually he caught up. I mean, some kids, they don't yeah. catch up or they need help catching up, but it's just like, also know that milestones are guidelines. <laughs> a lot of things. Are yeah. Guidelines. Like, yeah, yeah I, I don't, yeah. I don't think any, I don't think any, I don't think there's, any hard and fa- there's no hard and fast way to life. Yeah. At any level. Like, and I, I mean, I'm not, when when I ask, you know, Reba or my mother in law, like, so when does crawling happen? When does if like I know one of the things like Corey said to me when I first told him that I was gonna be a father and I knew it was a son, he's like, So, uh the minute you change a diaper, put a towel over it. 
And he didn't even have to say what it was. And I'm like, oh, yeah, because that'll be a fountain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then, like, um, I feel like it within that same conversation, or that this might have been Lee from Phoenix Overdrive. He's like, look, you're going to make mistakes, but just remember, it's not the mistakes you make. It's, you know, how you how you course correct um because it can always be course corrected until it can't be Mm -hmm. um and the way that it can't be you're you'll know uh when it can't be or maybe or if you don't if if for some reason you don't know you will learn that way too late and regret it for the rest of your life so the whole point is just try and be um Try try and be amenable to the situation. Try and be reactive rather than 100% proactive. Yeah. I also want to say that, like, my daughter was a lot quicker on picking up things like reading and talking. Because girls are smart. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, girls pick up things faster. than So, like, if a milestone says, oh, well, you're – kids should be talking by this age or whatever and they're like a month or two behind it's it's okay like my Mm -hmm. my daughter was like speaking words and almost full sentences by the time she was like almost a little over a year and a half and my Mm -hmm. son is like struggling to come up with like words to say you know like he, he still can't talk the way that she was talking and he's almost two but also he was that way with with walking like he just refused to walk mm-hmm. and it was getting to the point where we were starting to get kind of worried. And then one day he just stood up and started running down the hallway, you know? So, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> you, you just, just met, like that. Yeah. Just, just like that. Yeah. Just, just stood up and started running down the hallway and we were like, Oh, well, well I guess we don't have to worry about that. So, you know, they're, they're still on their own timeline. Calling his wife was there like, man, our, our son's starting to get kind of derpy. We, no, we <laughs> thought that because like he would like pull himself, right? Oh. Like, like with his arms and just like basically army crawl on the floor. And then like he started crawling out of nowhere <laughs> because he wouldn't. And then he just stood up, right? And just started doing his thing. And we were just like, oh, oh okay, boy. well. But see, I'll bet you, I'll bet you all of us individually have that thing in our life that we just could not do. And then all of a sudden could, Mm -hmm. and I can tell you, and I can tell you exactly what it was for me. Like talk to people. Wait, who me? Are you talking about? Okay. Oh, Oh. I was was like, I was like, we'll see the one has kept the whole conversation lubricated tonight. I, I, I I will, I will say I've never known you not being able to talk to people. So, so I'm, I, I can't speak to that, but I remember when I was learning to drive a semi and I shit you not when I was being supervised by a driver, I was absolutely dog shit at driving a semi. Now, part of me is like, were they overreacting to things I was doing or choices I was making in certain situations that very well could be because no one wants, no one wants an accident on a CDL because that can yeah. really follow you forever. Uh, not unlike, you know, crimes, um, crimes. But when I went and, you know, did my driver's tests for see, all of a sudden I was a fucking master. Like the driving instructor was like, you did. I, how long have you been practicing? And I'm like literally two days. And they were, and they were like, that's amazing because usually people have to do this three or four times and usually we have to say wait two months and then come back but like you did everything basically flawlessly i think i got a 99 because they didn't want to give me a 100 um and i come back with my cdl and the driver that had been supervising me for the two days prior he's like how the fuck (laughs) because you were doing absolutely dog shit yesterday i'm like like, like, whose dick did you suck to get that? <laughs> <laughs> Oddly, none. 
but <laughs> not, not that time. But so, and I'll bet you, and like, and I have a weird, I have a weird memory where I can recall shit that I did like a way long time ago that I probably shouldn't be able to remember what I do. But I'll bet you somewhere in the recesses of each of our minds, we all have that one moment where I was absolutely dog shit, and then. And then all of it, like, well, Corey probably is like talking to people. I was bad at it. Then all of a sudden I wasn't. I started DNA and I've been going ever since. Yeah. Uh, this is a very minor one, but it's like, I, I couldn't whistle for the longest time. And I was always frustrated as a kid. And then one time without even like putting in a lot of effort, I just started whistling. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, see, I have a feeling for you, Stephanie, and this, is, I'm not like trying to paint you in a certain way, but I feel like. It was writing for you. All of a sudden, you were just good at it. Thanks for the compliment. I don't know if I'm still good yeah. at it, though. I'll but bet thank you, you are. Oh. I'll bet you are. I, I read Boss Rush every so often, and yours are pretty good. Thank you. So, I don't have the, I don't have the time as, as much as I would like, but, you know, I try. Uh, so, uh, I mean, not to take over anybody's hosting duties what do you say we get out of here i feel like we've had a time no 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 no, no. i was i was waiting for the right segue to like to like wrap it up yeah you know, I, I got I, you fam it's fine <laughs> all right well, <laughs> well cool do you want to take us out or, or or do i have it <laughs> I, I think matt's just gonna host now <laughs> i will do this very poor hey give me a give me a <laughs> night off sometime. I, I, you know what laron no you you are you are the, the pc muscle race i have to tag you in you got oh this. look at that look look at that that nickname's getting around like mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. all right everyone well that is our show for tonight um as always uh we want to thank you for tuning in and listening to us uh for hanging out with us if uh you know make sure you know like check us out you know whether you hit us up on the free feeds or if you're on the patreon on the patreon do what you gotta do uh but we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up tonight uh before we go uh real quick matt refresh everybody how they can get with you cohost.org slash infinite dash rewind that's the social media platform i prefer cool well that's gonna do it for us tonight uh on behalf of uh, uh cory and stephanie i just want to say good night be careful out there take care of yourselves uh and uh come back and have fun with us again when we bring when we come back with another episode of boss rush after dark the alternative podcast show for the boss rush network we love you good night Next time y'all see me, I'll be a dad. Oh, yes. I'll call you daddy. Yeah, call daddy Matt. Oh, daddy stop. Matt. <laughs> you guys. Don't call me Mad Daddy either. I do not want to make you jump. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> so long. We love you. Bye. <laughs>